Today we're going to talk about how to install the TFT32 Spy display. Now this is a touch screen display so I'm just going to point out real quick that you can touch on this area and it's usable for at the moment Clipper. I have to research if it works in Marlin as well so don't quote me on Marlin. So let me flip this over and show you what we got here. So as you can see, there's a couple of different connectors. This one actually connects to the components that are on the board underneath. This connector we're not going to use. And this is our spy connector. So we're going to actually use this ribbon cable to connect to it via the ZIF socket, I believe it's called. And then we have another one right over here that's on the board. Now this was kind of difficult to find the information in the manual on this, but I eventually did find it because I didn't talk about it almost at all. So let me show you how to do this on the Manta EZ. You're going to need the blue part of your cable that comes in this kit. You're going to have to pull this out because this moves. So you'll pull this out, you'll slide this in, and then you'll apply pressure to lock it in place. So let me flip this back over. I'm going to place this over here. See if I can keep that level. And then I'm going to have to do the same with this cable on this board. So I'll slide it into here. Get it as far in as you can. And then I'm going to have to lock it down. Now we're going to have to edit the file that we worked on previously for this. So if you haven't watched my previous tutorial on this for the CB1 with uh, EMMC, you're going to have to watch that in order to understand what's going on here. So we're going to have to set this up for an EMMC boot so we can modify a file. So I've got the first jumper. I'm going to place that in the slot 3 position for the jumper cap. And I'm going to do four as well. This will make more sense on the video that's in the upper right hand corner earlier. So now I'm going to have to plug this in. Once this is actually plugged in, I'm then going to have to go to the computer real quick here. So let me uh, balance that out. As you can see, it's actually powering up but not working. And you'll understand why in a second. Obviously, it's messing with the camera. So let me unplug it for a second here. You can see the camera works fine. It's just it likes to go dark on this for some reason. So let's go over and see what's going on over on the desktop. So on the desktop, I actually have the environment up. What this is, is if you go over here, this is the actual software you're going to need that I covered in the previous tutorial. And we're going to have to modify this file for the board environment. So if you want to see where that is, the actual manual is over here that I downloaded earlier. And obviously there's not a lot in this. So let me go through it real quick. This is why I jumped over a lot a second ago. It's a serial peripheral interface. That's what SPY is. It's just basically the wiring type and the software used to communicate. So if we scroll down a little bit further, it talks about, you know, the input voltages, the logic, yada, yada, yada. It's not really that important for you to know all this. Um, then if we get down in the nitty gritty, this is our J2 connector that we're working with. And let's see if they even cover how to connect to it. I believe they didn't. So yeah, they didn't even talk about it. But they did say that you want to work with version 2.1, or excuse me, version 2.2.1 as the base version. But I believe the last video I showed you was 2.2.0. But we can check that in a second. And then they talk about the environment file. And they talk about what to actually edit, which is the overlay for your display. So we're going to see if that actually shows up 
in the actual file that we're going to be working with. So it's really weird. This file looks a little bit dated. Um, this also may affect things. Um, I did mess around with this yesterday, so I commented it out in my file. But let's get back to actually how we can edit the actual configuration. If we go back over to the actual thing over here, originally the other day when I did the EZ version, I jumped over to here for the command. This was the version command. Someone did warn that it's good to check this. Um, I skipped over it on purpose because I didn't think it had value, but they of course have their opinion that it does and I kind of agree. But in this case, I want to show you how to do this command. Essentially, you have to copy it. And I already have the PowerShell up. Now, I did change the directory like I did in the previous video. So I'm just going to up arrow because I already have the command here. And I'm going to hit Enter. Now, this will bring up the device. You can hear that little ding noise. Now, if we go over to the actual drive for the boot drive, you'll find your board environment. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna edit Notepad. Inside Notepad, this is the actual thing we have to modify. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the comment, which is that hash mark. Now, I did have this originally uncommented. This is actually for something different. This is actually for the uh, HDMI, I believe, but I'm gonna leave it commented out for now. And I'm going to hit Control S or Save to actually save this file. Then I'll close it. And you can see that it's now modified for this time and date. So I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to have to go back over to the board for a second. I'm going to have to actually disconnect the power so you can actually see what I'm doing. Because apparently there's something weird going on with this throwing off the camera. And I'm going to pop out both of these jumpers now that we've made that mod to the default environment and then I'm going to power this back up now keep in mind I do have a jumper here for power that I showed in the previous video and I'm also going to connect these back up hopefully in the right place but I might screw it up so we shall see I can actually double check this so I'm going to do the center one and I have to do a second one. So let me show you that real quick. I have to go over to the desktop for a moment. Let me close out of here. And what I'm checking is actually on the Manta, I have to check what the actual interface looks like. So as you can see right here, we have the hot end zero, which is your first extruder. And then we have thermal bed, which is right next to it. That's what I'm actually looking for. So let's go back over to the desktop for a second and plug in the second one in the right place. These are just thermistors to make your clipper run correctly. Normally you would have it built into your printer. Of course, I'm having trouble getting it in there. There we go. And sorry for the mess. So, now that we've got that done, I'm going to have to power back up the board. I'm going to do it with 5 volts instead of regular power, so if you want to remove that when you're actually using power, that is wise. I just do this so I can troubleshoot. So, it should power up in a second, and we'll see if it actually works, because we already loaded the OS in the previous video. So, let's give this a second. It's probably going to take a moment to actually boot. And I have it upside down, which is awesome. So let me rotate that around. Put this underneath so it hopefully is level. And I may have just messed with the camera, but we'll find out. Okay, so the camera, once this became dark, was a little bit easier to work with. So now you can actually touch the screen and do what you want to do. Well, let's try config. And you can see that you can go through different menus. So let's see if we can go to settings. So obviously there's some settings here. I'm not going to cover all that. I just wanted to show you how to get up and running. 
and uh, I wanted to thank first of all my patrons as well as the people on PayPal for their donations to keep this going and I'll put a link in the description as always and at the end I'll actually put a thank you note to all the people that did subscribe and also if you want a quick look at videos that haven't come out yet it's up on patreon as well for the people that are subscribed so everyone take care be safe and i'll talk to you later